You all seem to really like my previous video, quite literally, and don't forget to like this one as well, about my minifigure display behind me and how I aim to collect every costume from Star Wars in Lego minifigure form. In fact, I pretty much have all of the ones for Luke added into this video and a ton of other minifigures. There are 38 minifigures we are adding to the display, which I'm pretty sure last time I think it fits about 180. Well, we've also got a few more than that because I have freed up the top row. You can't see it too clearly behind me, but we'll be taking a look at that in a second. First, you saw it on the screen, hopefully on that side of the screen somewhere. We are welcoming back George to the members. And I think the reason he has considered rejoining is for the members mascot, this skeleton right here for Halloween is very fitting for Christmas. We might have to 3D print him a Santa hat, but this is the members mascot. And the great thing about this is it can hold the Harry Potter wand I got last year. So if you would like to become a member, you do get your name 3D printed. That's right, I'm 3D printing Lego tiles just for you with your username on to add to the members board. And we're coming up to about halfway. So if you do want to get yourself on the very first members board, once this is filled, I'm not going to move these to another base plate. These are staying on this plate forever. This is the very first members board to consider joining instructions behind the scenes and also early news onto which minifigures I am stocking on the Bricklink store, which are now up. A bunch of clones, rebels, a few named minifigures. Sabine, Yoda, go check it out. If you do want to know what other things are on there, a few other themes and pieces as well that you might need for your latest mock. But today's video is about that minifigure display. So let's get straight into it. We've got a load of minifigures to work through. In fact, we might as well round that 38 up to 40 and take a look at the sig figs because well, my sig fig doesn't really look like me. And someone pointed out that my partner, my fiance, doesn't have a Star Wars sig fig. We both have Harry Potter. We both have regular city ones. I don't think she has a Marvel one either. So I have to get on to that. But I've got this Jedi that doesn't really look like me. But what I could do is swap out the head and hair piece for Cassian's face and Qui-Gon's hair. Now, we're not done yet. It still needs a bit of work, mainly around modifying Qui-Gon's hair piece to work for my hair. We're going to have to chop off this length at the back and get rid of the two side bits, but I think that's a pretty good hair piece. There's a similar hair piece that is used for Kanan Jarrus, but not only would I have to order one for myself, I'd have to order one for Kanan as well because I don't own a Kanan minifigure, so I'll keep an eye out for both of these and basically pick up what's ever cheaper and I'll try not to modify the Lego piece, but there's been enough Qui-Gon's that it's not a rare piece and I'm not too worried about cutting down a piece as common as Qui-Gon's hair. So I will update this for a future episode, hopefully by next month. Maybe every one or two months we'll have an update like this. And I've also finally made my fiance a sig fig, this Mandalorian here using Agatha's head from the CMF and also... This might be Hawkeye's hair from the Marvel CMF as well, with a Mando torso and legs. She's definitely more of a Mandalorian and I'm more of a Jedi. So I will add these to the display and again, update the head and hair piece in due time. But perhaps the reason why most of you clicked on the video is because of the rebel friend in the thumbnail. So I think it's only right we do that now and then get to the other minifigures later on. You're gonna have to wait till the end for C-3PO. So Perhaps you clicked on for both of these, but this rebel friend is using custom printed decals by me. And they're actually just printed stickers of nine numbs, torso, front and back, because I don't fancy paying 90 odd, whatever the set costs, just to get the nine num torso and then buying it again for nine num. So I do actually have a few of these decals spare. I printed them just in case I didn't have enough. And now I don't really have a use. I'm not gonna use them for 9 num I would like to get the official minifigure. Perhaps I can make a few more Rebel friends. And if you'd be interested in picking these up, they are stickers. I don't know what Bricklink's rules are about stickers, but if you would be interested in picking up a Rebel friend, then definitely let me know. And that's something I can look into for you on top of all the Rebels that are already up there. Now, very similar to this, you might remember I did a video about all my UCS figs and I was actually mistaken with one of the snowtroopers from the UCS 
8080. And now that I've picked up the advent from 2022 to open later this year, that gives me the head that I need for the snow trooper I was missing. But I actually got one of the torsos wrong. There is a snow trooper commander, I think. And I'll put up a side by side so you can see what's different about the torso. But again, I've just made a decal, a little sticker to stick on the torso. So I've got the right one. It saves spending so much money for an official version, which UCS says unproduced like the common playset or even the battle packs. So I'm not sure how rare this piece will be. And just in case I crack the torso whilst I'm playing with it, I don't want to affect the value of the Lego piece, which is why I cut so many corners with 3D printing and custom decals. But I do have that Snow Trooper now to add to my ATST. And whilst we're on to Imperials, I have split up my older style minifigures. Like I said at the start of the video, I have expanded into that top row on the display, which means we can have two sections to the older style of minifigures, which is when I started getting into Lego Star Wars. We're looking at 2008 all the way up to, I'd say 2012-ish time. I don't wanna to go too much past that because then I start getting a load of minifigures and I'm gonna need a whole display case just for them. But I think that's quite a good region. Those first couple of years that I started getting into a Lego and the brand new additions are the Imperial Droid up the front. We've also got the AT-80 driver and the Snow Trooper from Hoth. We've got the Scout, the Droid, and both the Sand Troopers on the right. Basically, everyone except for the top three figs on the left-hand side. And the other half of the Troopers have been added to a whole separate plate. So we've got our villains, and now we have our heroes. The brand new are the other two X-Wing pilots. Dak Router at the top, and Porkins, I believe. Again, there'll be corrections in the comments if I am wrong. You'll notice Sassy's droid has also joined the gang. R3D5, if memory serves me correct, and then we got R2 QT at the top, which is made using stickers, which I am gonna show you a bit closer up because it's really hard to get that dome piece. These are only holding on by one leg on the display, but it was really hard to get a sticker on that dome piece. I've just used screenshots from the Lego Skywalker Saga game because that's the best material I think we've got. And they could definitely be made better. I could render these in some sort of art style, make the background translucent. But the hardest piece is that dome. And I completely understand why Lego normally give us printed pieces or just leave out stickers in general when they're talking about dome. Speaking of which, we do have a look at the brand new droid meant to come in Ahsoka Starfighter next year. So if you'd like to take a little look at that, I'm sure you can find it on the internet somewhere, but there are images up on the members Discord. I've also added the 20th anniversary minifigures as well, and you can see Vader's helmet is hovering above his minifigure. But again, a combination of printed parts and 3D elements because no store had any more than one or two of the pieces I was missing. So we do have Han Solo here, who I don't have the official minifigure for. You can see that stick ahead. There's a funny story behind the stickers actually for these minifigures that members will be getting a behind the scenes look into in a probably about a week or so. So stay tuned for that. And again, do consider becoming a member if you're interested in the behind the scenes of 3D printing of stickers and everything else on this channel. Vader's looking pretty good. That helmet, completely 3D printing. Again, I'm gonna mention that in the behind the scenes video. And then we've got Lando Calrissian as well, who is another minifigure that is a combination of decals and 3D printing. You can see sticker face and the 3D printed hair, which again, it took a couple of attempts to get right, but I'm happy with how we've ended off. Now we're getting into the actual minifigures that I'm adding to my display here. So I'm gonna add these on at a later time. It's just easier to show you the one figure than show you them mixed in with the nine. And I know there is going to be some questions about why I don't have a Blue Milk Luke. Well, I actually have so many of these Farm Boy Lukes. I think Homer's using a torso and legs. I've used a torso and legs for one of my space minifigures so that I can add them to other minifigures. Uh, we've got the official one on the display already with a poncho and I'm sure you'll see the parts floating around elsewhere. So I have created another decal for the face 
you can only really see it when the light hits the corner as it rounds off that it is in fact a sticker. I can even trick myself sometimes looking at this, but this is a decal for the face of Blue Milk Luke. Just to say that I've got some sort of version, I don't really fancy paying all that money to get an official head, let alone an official minifigure, and really wasn't interested in this edition when the game came out because it's so much cheaper on the computer. But I now do own a Blue Milk Luke. And you might remember there were only three spots for Luke Skywalker. So we've got Blue Milk Luke, and we've also got the Empire Strikes Back Medical Frigate Robes, I'm gonna call this, as I don't think there's really an official name to the outfit Luke wears. But the end of Empire Strikes Back, Leia's actually in her A New Hope robes again. So I'm gonna have to get my hands on another one of those minifigures. I definitely regret not picking it up while she was in the magazine, but We've got Luke using Anakin's episode one torso, which works well, which means I have broken down Shmi, but Shmi is definitely in gray robes instead. So I'm keeping my eye out for a torso that'll work better for Shmi. But this isn't the only Luke skull cut we have. With the recent Bricklink order, I did get a helmet for Endor Luke, which I do want to show off very, very quickly. And I've done the same for Leia. But the final Luke we've got to add to our collection is Crate. Luke. And again, I will be purchasing any stickered faces are on a wish list on Bricklink. So I will be purchasing these at some point, but they are considering placeholders for the official thing. This torso taken straight out of the Skywalker saga once again. I was considering using one from Red Skull in one of the Marvel Mighty Micros sets, but it had a brown belt and this just looks so much better. I do want to get some dual molded legs for a few of these minifigures, including the Endor ones, but we have a crate Luke to add on display. And from afar, these decals do look really nice. I feel like I'm pronouncing that differently every time I say the word. Like I said, the only update to Leia is the helmet on the Endor minifigure, freeing up the hairpiece for a general Leia Organa, which is basically the same outfit, just without the green poncho. I would like to get Legolas's legs for this minifigure as well. Right now, they're like 10, 15 pounds for just the legs. You're better off trying to buy the minifigure, or better yet, maybe one day we will own Rivendell. There are rumors for another Lord of the Rings set next year, so there is still hope of me picking up a Lord of the Rings set eventually, and hopefully it includes Legolas. Han is very similar, only one mini, actually there's two minifigures. We've got young Ian here, who is from the Padawan Menace. I think last time I said Yoda Chronicles, I get the animated shows mixed up and I don't really know exactly what I'm talking about. I definitely need to give them a rewatch. but this is the young Han with the dark tan legs, accurate to the minifigure, different head and hair piece, but it looks close enough for my display and maybe one day we'll own the official minifigure. But I completely forgot about an iconic Han costume last time I made this video. The Carbonite block. I can't believe I forgot about Han in Carbonite. I don't know how I did, but I will be adding this to my display as well and we'll take a look towards the end of the video. You might have also seen the short of my Shadows of the Empire Lando Calrissian and I've given him a helmet because I don't have enough heads and hair pieces, but I'm gonna try and bulk order a few of those Grief Cargo heads that everyone was saying would be great for Lando. And there was also a few other celebrities that they'd be good for that I saw in the comments. But for now, a helmet's gonna have to do. Palpatine's got two new minifigures. We first got off Snoke because he is a clone of Palpatine and it does kind of make sense. And there are a ton of other minifigures. I'll try and fill in the gaps for all these characters when I've added the minifigures to their display. But I first got to give a shout out to one of our members over on the Discord, Soybean, for the idea for the next minifigure. Now if you play Battlefront 2 you'll know what Sentinels are or if you've read the Aftermath trilogy which I cannot recommend enough. You'll know Sentinels are these droids that were programmed to basically allow Palpatine to keep giving orders and for all we know with him now surviving this could have just been a Skype call or a fancy Star Wars FaceTime and Soybean created this minifigure which they shared over in the members discord and I knew straight away I had to do it, but I didn't own the neck armor from the Ninjago minifigure in that red color. So I took to my 3D printing and decaling again. I'm not quite sure what I think about the face on Palpatine. 
maybe I should go for either a completely black head or a hologram like Palpatine face, which Lego don't make, but there are other ways of getting my hands on it. But this back piece for the head is actually an Iron Man helmet. Now, don't worry, I haven't cut down an official Lego piece. I have 3D printed one and then used that to cut it down. Again, the whole process is over in the members discord if you are interested in that side of things. But we have a Palpatine Sentinel with that creepy hologram. But I guess ever since Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine just didn't look as good as he once did. But that is another Palpatine for the display and also means it frees up another slot for Palpatine and he'll now be taking up his own plate on the unit. Before we get to the final few minifigures, we've got Yoda, we've got R2, we've got 3PO, and then I'll show them on display. I would like to mention, I'm thinking of changing how we display the minifigures. At the minute, there is minifigures at the front, we skip a stud, then minifigures, we skip a stud, then minifigures, and the back one is empty. I'm thinking of adding some bricks on the front one, and then maybe using some jumper plates on the one behind it to get that half a stud distance just for any backpacks and accessories minifigures might have or any weapons like the anniversary minifigures. Speaking of, they'll be fine because there's not enough to fit. But just so we can fit a few more than 200 and whatever it is minifigures we can fit at the minute, we would be adding another row and pushing up to that 300 minifigure mark. And really right now, we need all the space we can get. So if you think you've got the perfect layout for this base plate, let me know over in the members discord or in the comments of this video. And I'm very interested to see what ideas we come up with. But for Yoda, we have the Old Republic. I wasn't gonna include him last time. I think I will now because we've got this version, the next version of Yoda. And it also, again, like Palpatine, leaves a free spot for if I can think of another Yoda minifigure. I'm contemplating changing the head to the newer one, but I think I'll just do that on a case-to-case -case basis for Mox. I think I'm gonna leave this animated head because I'm already missing one Yoda head from one of the special minifigures. And this is the official Lego minifigure, so I guess it works. The same reason that for the Blue Milk Luke, I have used a lighter tan hair piece, even though I don't like it that much, it does match up with the minifigure we got. And then the next Yoda minifigure you might also remember from one of my old shorts is this dodgy off printed Christmas one with miscolored hands. And I think the quicker we get that off the screen, the better. Now there is a color correction that has to be made. I had a light nougat plate for the R2-D2 from the Salvage. It's actually a dark tan Lego piece and to be fair in the photos I shared it did look like dark tan so my dodgy camera has definitely got my back on that one but I have corrected it to a dark tan plate we've got the two cups on one is a butter brew and one is some sort of chocolate milk so interesting pieces used here but it's nice to have at least one of the minifigures from the SL barge I cannot show you the back of R2-D2 for Let's just say reason. So I'm gonna put him down and move swiftly on to C-3PO, who both R2-D2 and C-3PO do have a Christmas sweater version coming out in the 2022 advent calendar. It sounds so weird when I say coming out because I haven't yet opened the set, but the set has now retired. So they've already been out. I'm gonna be getting them this December when I open the advent calendar throughout the month. But R2-D2 doesn't actually have space for the Christmas sweater version. Whereas C-3PO, we are going to be extending today out one side, so he will have a spot for that Christmas sweater. Very on. On top of the other two minifigures we've got, which is this Empire Strikes Back 3PO, where he's broken up on Chewbacca's back. I, I had to include this C-3PO. That does mean I've got legs and an arm of C-3PO elsewhere, but perhaps if I ever create a mock, we can have them laying around as well. I like the Skywalker Saga where 3PO splits into his top half and bottom half. Should I include them as separate minifigures? Because that's going to take up a lot of space. And last but not least is a minifigure I contemplated purchasing, but couldn't find an official source to where it is from. And that is this unfinished C-3PO. It's criminal Lego have not made an official minifigure of the 3PO we see in episode one or two, because in two, he's not shiny, he's silver plated. And this isn't exactly 
like he is from episode one. He doesn't have the shiny faceplate until Padme adds it to him in a deleted scene from Attack of the Clones, which is a really, really cool scene. All the bonus features from the prequels and deleted scenes are really, really fun if you own the DVD copies like I do. And we do have some back decal printing on the sticker for the back of the torso. This is actually using the torso for my duplicate of Lobar. I tried to make use of a few of my spare minifigures and because I had a second Lobar, I thought I might as well go with it. And that is stickers on the hip piece, including that front bit between the two legs and the other two legs. And just to show you, these decals are pretty good. They do stay on when you're moving around the legs. And even if you were to sit down a few minifigures, which you'll see towards the end of the week, the decals do still stay on, which is really cool. But now it's time to add these to the minifigure display. And now that the minifigures are up, let's take a look at who we've got. First off, I'm going to start on the top of the display. We've got a bit of space where this... I cannot remember the name of that creature from Tatooine, the Imperials ride. It will come to me in a minute. But there's a bit more space for a few more gonks. So I'm going to have a video in about a week's time or so, building a few other gonks, and I'm going to display them to the left. So the top shelf is reserved for just all of my gonks and that will include me getting all the printed parts that I need for the earlier models. Working our way down from there, we've got the older style of figs. Like I said, roughly 2008 to 2012 figs on the left two plates. Then we have our anniversary minifigures, which do look quite good together on that display there. We then have our Clone Wars figures just to the right of that. And there is a space for another style of minifigures but first I'm going to hold up to see just how many of the newer anniversary minifigures I do get because that could be somewhere I display them or even something like my customs like my Cal Kestis, my Ninth Sister, my Purge Trooper, something like that. We then move down to Yoda, the front three are really all we need to look at here and then I for the minute put mine and my fiance Sig Figs and the Rebel Friend there. They are Somewhat a space holder, there is a space for them down here with George Lucas, but perhaps I can add, I've just realized what I can add on the top right. So top right, I have added my minifigures behind the helmets. We have Anthony Daniels, Kenny Baker, we have Jeremy Bullock and Peter Mayhew alongside George Lucas himself. There are a few upgrades I can make to these minifigures, they're built mostly using spare parts but they do definitely fill that gap and now we get on to our Star Wars characters. First up Padme, Windu, Mandos and even Boba at the end of this row. No changes. There'll be at least a minifigure for Padme next week. There's a spot for Windu because the UCS gunship version does have sand on his torso from Geonosis. I'm not really looking at getting it similar with the next row. No sequel updates here. No Ahsoka changes and I have a few minifigures like I said about the Christmas sweater still in the advent box, still completely new, untouched, and another 3PO from the magazine that I'm using for another video. That will hopefully be out tomorrow. We've had the updated color to R2D2, and again, no other changes on that row. The mall that's missing from there is currently on a diorama. We move down to Han Solo. We finally have a Carbonite Han and a young Han over on the left hand side as well, just hiding behind another young Han from Solo. The minifigures that I'm missing is, I remember the Solo one is the fur coat and the non-muddy mud trooper. And then we have, there's another one. I don't remember what the other one is. Oh, it's, it's the regular Han Solo, not that outfit, but there's another one with goggles. And then we do have, I wanna get the Return of the Jedi, which is the mixed match that I said about last video. And also the Starkiller one where he's in his blue jacket because the old Hoth minifigures of Han do have that blue jacket. That's sort of what it was referencing to the giant Parker jacket that they wear that has been miscolored to blue. There's now an official use for the blue one. So I'll be getting that and adding that to the display. Kenobi's got a few minifigures elsewhere and again, a few minifigures like Anakin that I have on my list, including a Force Ghost, which still... No one has seen anyone create a physical Force Ghost Kenobi for Sour, or at least not currently for Sour. Anakin I have merged together, but there's a few Anakins I want. We've got Snoke 
and the Palpatine Sentinel over on the far right hand side. Going down to Lando, we've got a few minifigures. Again, I'm going to order heads and perhaps even hair pieces to make them look a bit better. Leia's got a ton of outfits and will definitely be the center of the next minifigure update for sure. I want to start getting a few of Leia's costumes on there because some of them are so simple with the different outfit changes they go throughout the original trilogy. And then Luke Skywalker is partially complete. I'm gonna quickly run through the minifigures that I'm missing before I wrap up the video because there's a few outfits from the comics and extended lore. Before I wrap up the video, I'd like to apologize for the next clip. It's all shot out of focus. I was paying so much attention to trying to remember the different videos and the different notes that I've left and what minifigure that relates to. I completely forgot to double check whether we were in focus or not, but I'll be flashing up images anyway. So hopefully it's not too big a problem. And thank you so much for making it this far in the video. Luke Skywalker does have a few comics appearances. We've got the ceremony version without the medal, which does require the new Yavin set. We've got the Dark Empire comics where he's dressed up as Vader. Although we kind of have a minifigure of him in Vader's robes from Empire Strikes Back. It's slightly different. There's no chest piece to Luke. It's just the actual robes of Vader. That'll be interesting how I get that done. I could always rub out one of Vader's torsos, but I'm trying to not damage Lego bricks in trying to make these minifigures here. Only when I really have to. War of the Bounty, as I was... And I think the light is going to stay, as I was saying... What of the Bounty Hunters saw him in, I think that's when he's got, I think that's the same as the Ceremony one without the jacket. It's like a black top and brown trousers. We've got the Force Ghost that I'm still looking at picking up. We've got Baby Luke as well. We've got Young Luke, but we do need a Baby Luke from Revenge of the Sith. And of course, the minifigure from Rebuild the Galaxy. So there are a ton of minifigures. Just to go over all the layer ones we're missing, the Bespin Robes, Cloud City Jumpsuit, which is Hoth with the Bespin hair. We've also got the Medical Frigate, we've got Boosh, we've got the Hut Slayer outfit, we've got General Leia without the Poncho, and then we've got Ewok Village, Young Leia, the one from Battlefront, the Grey Dress from Crate, which is probably going to be the hardest of that, so that might be left for a future one. We've then got the upgrade for the Endor minifigure with the Legoless legs. We've got Baby Leia again from Revenge of the Sith, and also a Leia ghost as she appears in the sequels. Han's got a list just as long as Luke's. A few for Kenobi, including Reiko Hardeen from the Clone Wars. I do want to get my hands on that minifigure. Anakin still needs a Younglin version as well of when he was first inducted into the Jedi Order. We've got a ghost for Yoda, Kenobi. Arguably for Qui-Gon and for Anakin, I would like to get two different ghosts for the two different actors that played him. Maul still needs Rebels, still needs his metal legs from Clone Wars and a few like that. We don't have a solo Chewbacca. I've got a really long list. And there's some customs I want to make, like Palpatine's robes from Episode 1 and Episode 2. And then he has like his red Emperor robes in Episode 3. So I'm keeping my eyes out for one of those minifigures. Uh, 3PO has a few. There's a 3PO I've seen with his bowcaster from episode 9. It's little outfit changes like that. The little sneaky things they change to make it seem like a brand new minifigure that I want to capture on this display. We're going to need to add a lot more space. So let me know about the base of the plates and if there's anything better than adding a brick and a jumper, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Don't forget to consider becoming a member and check out all the stock I've added onto BrickLink. So stay tuned, drop a like on this video and thank you for making it to the end. Check out the others on screen now. I'm going to include the BrickLink video as well for those of you that haven't seen it and let YouTube recommend the top one. Thank you for watching and may the bricks be with you always.